know, you Maybe said it. So people thought it, it was going to rain, and there's nothing worse than a limp flag held aloft. Is there? <laughs> it's not a flappy it's, flag. It's less than you heroic. Don't want that. It's less than flappy heroic. Flag's not nice, um, so listen, um, uh, Metallica have uh, not long finished on the pyramid stage, and they seem to enjoy it. Uh, they seem to genuinely move them. Let's find out how it was for them, because uh, Joe and Hugh have hooked up with Lars. And you join us now. These are the interviews I absolutely love doing because it's the post show kind of post mortem, I guess. And we've got the Lars Ulrich is here from Metallica this just literally stepped off stage. As they uh, dig him up and pry him up and bring, carry him up the stairs. I mean, couldn't we have met halfway down? <laughs> we could have carried oh, you yeah, up okay. if, I knew, if I knew you needed carrying. Yeah. Um, how was it for you? Uh, that was, um, that, was uh, that was sensational. I don't remember much of it. I remember walking up on stage. And I remember walking up your stairs. Uh, the rest of it was a bit of a blur. But um, it was great. The energy was fantastic. Uh, all I saw out when I looked that way was flags. And when I looked that way was flags. And um, just uh, there was lots of uh, just real positive vibes and good positive energy. And everybody had uh, like big smiles on their faces. And um, we sort of held it together and, and played um, actually fairly decent and um so all around it was good thanks for asking a huge <laughs> congratulations i mean i feel a bit relieved and emotionally drained because there's been such a build-up isn't it you try to you try to be me <laughs> in the last month <laughs> so how do you feel be the glass how do you feel how do you controversy how do you feel it's like, we're just in a rock and roll band coming in to play your festival well, you, you've said it was a real there. privilege Relax, to do and you said it, it was very humbling to do it but you um, you immersed yourself in this festival completely you were here yesterday morning yeah, we I've saw been you here everywhere for, uh, 30 hours or so why did you do that well i figured um that if you were going to do this, I mean, everybody talks about how this is, I mean, this is something that, that penetrates at a whole nother level than any other festival anywhere. And this is obviously part of your guys' culture and history and everybody that's watching is. And I, I figured, listen, you never know with these things if you're gonna, ever going to get invited back. So I figured we have one shot. I want to come in. I got my all access AAA laminate. I'm going to soak up every second that I can of this thing. And um, so we came in. Um, yeah, about 30 hours ago, and last night we saw Skrillex, we saw uh, Arcade Fire, we saw bands, we walked everywhere. Uh, me and like a crew of five or six. Actually, Nick, um, you know, Emily's, Emily's hus husband, Emily yeah. husband was our gracious host and was kind enough to take us everywhere, and we saw every little sort of area and every little village and every little tent, and it was just such an amazing experience. Wow. And um, so by the time we were done with that at four, we all felt like we sort of knew what the vibe was here. Went back and slept for a couple hours, came right back down and felt like um, that we were ready to take this on again and, and did. Wow. Well, I think you proved all the critics totally wrong tonight. You absolutely smashed it. History's been made. The first metal band to headline Glastonbury. And you mentioned on stage that Maybe you'll come back to Glastonbury in the future, lads. We would love to. Uh, listen, first of all, I'm coming back tomorrow. Right. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm here the whole weekend, so I'm looking forward to Dolly tomorrow, to the Black Keys, to the Horrors, to uh, Kasabian. You know, the whole, I'll be the last one. I'll be the one, like, sweeping up, and <laughs> I'll be the one walking around with a you know, garbage bag on Tuesday cleaning up. So I'll, lads, you are I'll a still Glastonbury be addict. You're Absolutely. completely addicted I, to the whole festival. I'm I, glad I'm, to have sold it to you. I met Michael yesterday. Of You know, it's, it's the whole thing's been amazing, Emily. How would you sum it up? How, in, in the Metallica experience at Glastonbury, how would you sum it up in a sentence? Uh, Otherworldly. Just a word. Brilliant. There Thank you, you very That's much. That's a big indeed. word for <laughs> this late at night. Um, no, it's been absolutely. I, I think it's going to take a little while to, to settle in. And obviously, um, when you find yourself talking about this whole thing, for I mean, I've done like nine Glastonbury interviews every day the last month, and I've run out of things to say about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now we're finally here. And um, oh, well, congratulations we played, and on it was, tonight. It was so man. much fun. Yeah. Thank Thank you. Well, coming to see us straight after the set as well. Take in. And so, thanks for coming to see us straight off stage. Of course. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. Enjoy tomorrow. I'm, actually, I'm still buzzed. We're going to go up and play one more. <laughs> yeah. So forgive me. There's one more encore <laughs> waiting up there. <laughs> Can I just uh, say, the rabbit hole is in that direction. Yeah. You should head for the rabbit that's, hole and uh, have a rabbit hole experience. That's where we ended up last night, and I'm sure that's where we'll end up tonight. Apparently, there's something about a secret underground chamber or something uh, yeah like, yeah you so go we'll there see if we can, uh, that can be the last bastion tonight no, you thank you very much indeed and we'll see you thank tomorrow you. thank you back to you now
Oh, thanks, guys. He is, I, I interviewed Lars yesterday. He said he's do, done so many Glastonbury interviews every day. He's absolutely yeah. right. But he completely gets what this festival is all about. He's mm. such a smart guy. As you can see, brilliant company. He's uh, really immersed himself yeah, in it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that was really heartwarming, actually. I, was really, I mean, that was sincere, wasn't it? That wasn't a charm offensive. That was someone who's had an experience. He said otherworldly, which is a very good word for it, actually. I was talking to him yesterday, and he really struck me, and you can see it there, I think, as just like a total music nerd. Like, he was talking about the first time Glass, uh, that they came over and wanted to play Glastonbury in about 1981, you know, yeah. when they did their first London shows. He knew the address of the club that they first played when they hit London. He grew up on British music, you know, Deep Purple, Tigers of Pantang. Tigers you know, of Pantang, I mean, wow. And that's what he said, all roads, metal-wise, yeah. lead to the UK. So this was the one thing uh, left for them to do. He looked a bit like Bill Bailey, didn't he, in close-up, I thought. Was he wearing a post a dressing gown hands. or a monk's cowl? Well, I don't know. I liked it either I liked way. it. It was rocking a good look. So uh, lovely to have you, Lars. Uh, we, we all enjoyed it very much. Um, uh, there's been more lights than I've ever seen on the park stage ever before tonight for Mogwai.